Chapter 14 Octavia, I have a reputation to maintain, Vinyl muttered, cheeks red with shame as she tried to pull the beanie over her eyes. Oh, shush, you sound just like... S hmm? The cellist stopped talking abruptly, freezing in place. Like who? Like a broken record, I meant to say. Whatever. I still look stupid. Vinyl tore the beanie off her head and placed it back on the hook. Luckily, the shop wasn't very busy this early in the morning. Only two other ponies were nearby, and they were too busy obsessing over different colored saddles to pay the other couple any mind, which was fortunate because they weren't being very subtle today. The DJ had been so drunk on the fact that they shared the bed again that she hastily agreed to the plan her roommate set out for the day. It was Thursday, so the gray mare had two tutorials in the afternoon, which meant she wanted to get as much done in the morning as possible. Remembering the difficulties they experienced on their spicy date a few days ago, Octavia decided that proper clothing was of utmost importance in the event they wanted to venture outside again. She had already secured herself some lovely blue boots and a white scarf, and was now attempting to outfit her roommate in similar clothes. But it looked great! It matched your mane perfectly, Octavia persisted, following the DJ as she walked over to a different rack. Hmm, well, this one isn't too bad, I guess. Vinyl plucked a grayish beanie from a hook and pulled it over her head. Most of her mane still stuck out from underneath it in a spiky mess, making her look rather cute. Octavia didn't dare say as much out loud, of course. Pretty sexy, huh? said Vinyl. The cellist didn't reply verbally, instead fluttering her eyelashes and smiling. She may have been new to this flirting activity, but she was learning quickly, as evidenced by the DJ choking on air for a moment. Is something wrong, Vinyl? Her smile grew. Recovering somewhat, the unicorn stepped closer. Damn it, Octavia. That was totally unfair. I have no idea what you're talking about, the gray mare replied innocently, brushing past her roommate in order to inspect the hoofwear section. Now, why don't you pick out some boots? You'll need them, especially if we go out walking at night again. All right, all right. Vinyl turned and glanced at the display. How about these dark ones with a black rim? Rather droll, don't you think? Besides, I expected more colorful choices from you. But gray and black are my favorite colors, the DJ replied defensively. I'm only saying that it's rather... odd. Octavia trailed off, and when Vina looked to see why, she found the cellist smirking knowingly at her. What? You're very sweet. But I don't mind if you want to pick brighter shades. Really, they would suit you better. I... Huh? It was Octavia's turn to frown in confusion. You mean, you're not doing this on purpose? Doing what? The DJ was getting rather bewildered at the odd behavior of her roommate. Her perplexed look giving way to a soft smile, she waved her hoof slightly to dismiss the issue. Oh, Vinyl, you're even sweeter than you realize. Don't worry about it. Okay. Screw it. I'm going to get these, and I don't want to hear a word against them. Not a word. On the short trip to the counter, Octavia seemed to stay closer than was really suitable in a public environment. Yet Vinyl couldn't quite summon the motivation to step away, as if standing next to each other in front of a shopkeeper was going to get them in trouble. Still, she hated how her first thought was of what other ponies might think. That kind of restriction was something she hadn't experienced in years. Her time in high school had affirmed her self-confidence to the point where very little could shake her. But now she had a weakness. A gorgeous, incredible, amazing weakness— but a weakness nonetheless. Octavia was a chink in her armor, a soft spot in her psyche. She was simultaneously the most valuable and the most vulnerable part of her. So now she had to worry about what other ponies would think, for Octavia's sake. Before, she could ignore the opinions of others on the basis that she had no pony to answer to but herself. Her parents had long given up, and she had no siblings. It was sort of why she became so self-assured in the first place, despite her failings. The world expected nothing from her, so nothing bothered her. This weakness, she realized, was an inherent part of what she now shared with Octavia. Whatever it was, it was absolutely crucial. It was this gap in her protection that allowed her to feel the way she did. Vinyl paid for the clothing on autopilot, still deep in thought. They exited the shop and stood for a moment in the street, letting the steadily growing crowd shuffle by. It didn't take Octavia long to realize something was wrong when her DJ didn't say anything. Vinyl, are you all right? She asked, more than a little bit concerned at the uncharacteristic silence. Huh? 
Oh, yeah, I'm fine. The unicorn seemed to come out of a daze, quickly donning a grin that put her roommate's heart at ease. Is there anywhere else you'd like to visit before we go home? Home, as in our home, that we share together. Home. Nah, let's head back. I'm sick of sharing you with the rest of the world, replied the DJ, cheering internally at the blush on Octavia's cheeks. It usually meant that she would be treated to an extreme close-up of those pretty amethyst eyes as soon as they got through the door, which, the fluttering in her chest admitted, was quickly becoming her favorite hobby. It was fortunate, then, that the cellist seemed just as enthusiastic about their latest shared activity, because kissing was extremely fun. Staying up into the early hours of the morning, holding each other tightly, with nothing but the soft sounds of lips against each other to disturb the peace. It was magical. More magical than actual magic. As they walked back through the streets of Manhattan, Octavia seemed to accidentally bump her hips against vinyl a lot more than usual. It wasn't much, but it pushed the DJ's mind into uneven terrain. It was a topic that was bound to come up sooner or later, and she guiltily admitted to herself that she wasn't exactly trying to stop thinking about it, if just kissing was so fun. But those were dangerous waters to tread. Vinyl buried the thoughts under a pile of worries and did her best to ignore them for the time being. Her cellist trotted along merrily, completely oblivious to the impure thought processes transpiring in the white pony beside her. As they entered and traversed the university campus, Octavia snuck a glance at Vinyl, who was still grinning at something unseen. The cellist knew, on some level, that she didn't really have to sneak glances anymore, and that Vinyl probably wouldn't mind in the slightest if she asked to spend the rest of the day just studying her every facial feature. The only thing that stopped her was the ever-present fear of creeping her roommate out. Sure, she'd gotten a lay with a lot of things lately, but there was no reason to push the boundaries. Vinyl hadn't even said a word when she woke up and saw Octavia sheepishly pushing her bed against the DJ so they could have more room to roll around during their... experiments. Because that's what they were, really. She needed to find out if it was possible to kiss a pony until they could no longer articulate thoughts. It was... But further study was needed. Octavia was good at studying. And so the cellist found herself wearing a grin not unlike the one in the unicorn beside her, while entertaining some thought processes that were also not far removed from her roommates. As they wandered down the path leading to the student village, the two ponies noticed a particular secret waitress stepping out of their building. She spotted them immediately and trotted over, blue and pink mane bobbing up with each step. Vinyl tensed up and edged slightly closer to Octavia on instinct. For her part, the cellist summoned a warm smile while simultaneously mentally preparing herself for what could be a battle of words. "'Octavia, I was looking for you,' said Bonbon bon as she drew it to a halt in front of them. "'And, um, hi, Vinyl.' The addition was as forced as it was awkward, the cellist noted. "'Hello, Bonbon. Bon. How can I help you?' Octavia replied, opting for a friendly tone. "'Well, you already have, actually. I just wanted to thank you.' I have. Um, you've spoken to Lyra recently, right? The gray mare nodded, the surprised reaction of the white pony in her peripherals making her feel a little guilty for not telling her sooner. Lyra was as much Vinyl's problem as hers. Did my words influence her? A lot! Bon Bon stepped closer and looked around to make sure no pony else was nearby. She came into the shop I work at. I won't go into detail, but she was really depressed. I went over to take her order, completely forgetting that she didn't know I worked there. It wasn't my brightest moment. As soon as she saw me, she started crying. I've never seen her cry at anything. Granted, I've only known her for a semester, but still, she's not the type to bawl her eyes out. Oh, and please don't tell any pony what I'm telling you. They both nodded quickly. All right, well, I took my lunch break and we went into the back room to talk. She broke down and told me all of these things I had no idea about, things I didn't think she was even capable of understanding. At some point, I asked her how she came to all those conclusions. She told me that you spoke to her, Octavia, and your words made her rethink everything. The cellist tried to exchange incredulous looks with vinyl, but the unicorn was too busy wearing a huge, proud grin. Which is why I want to thank you. Honestly, I think you've saved the best friendship I've ever had. I can never repay you. Octavia was beginning to realize that Vinyl wasn't the only pony who was more complex than they appeared. It seemed every pony had their own stories, 
and even if she didn't quite understand them, she could at least be happy that she helped them. But there was one little problem. I'm very glad to hear that you two are friends again. However, I must ask, did you tell her about Vinyl and I not exactly being enemies? Bon Bon's eyes widened. Oh, no, definitely not. It couldn't have been further from my mind. At a moment, she cocked her head to the side curiously. I know it's none of my business, but are you two... together? Octavia lowered her defenses as soon as it became clear that Bon Bon's intentions were good. So instead of replying with a carefully planned and convincing response, she sputted a few nonsensical noises and fell silent. Fortunately, Vinyl stepped in to reply in her stead. What makes you ask that? She said, trying to maintain an air of nonchalance. The cream-colored mare's gaze focused very deliberately on every article of clothing the two ponies wore. Vinyl followed it, finally realizing what Octavia was talking about in the shop. Gray and black boots and beanie? How had I not seen that? Still, part of her felt giddy with happiness at seeing her cellist wearing her colors in return. It was completely unfashionable and had a terrible contrast, but she wore them anyway. White and blue on gray... Uh, so we're wearing the clothing that just happens to be the same as each other's coat and mane. That doesn't prove anything. It was a shaky retort, and she knew they were in trouble. If you say so, everything looks pretty clear from where I'm standing. Bon Bon smirked, making it clear that she wasn't about to believe any excuses. Octavia managed to reclaim the ability to form complete sentences. Uh, well... I'm sure you're not the type of pony who would go sharing your theories with others. The blue and pink maned mare had the decency to look offended. Of course I'm not. Gossip was what always ruined my friendship with Lyra in the first place. Regardless, please try to be careful. I won't tell any pony, I promise. It's the least I can do for you both. Us both? Repeated Vinyl, raising an eyebrow. Well, yes. It's clear to me now that you're not nearly as bad as Lyra used to insist. Please understand, she's a very complicated pony. Bon Bon had a strained expression, as if desperate to make Vinyl see Lyra differently. We didn't mean anything by the jokes we made in class, I swear. She was a different pony, and I... Well, I don't really have an excuse. I thought they were funny, but I'm still sorry. Vinyl thought it over for a few moments, then broke into a grin. Ponies who held grudges never got far in the world, she reckoned. Eh, don't worry about it. The gray mare beside her also started to smile. I would prefer a friend over an enemy any day. Bon Bon beamed. That's great. I admit, I was pretty daunting telling you all of that. But Syke was right. You two really are nice ponies. Their jaws dropped, unnoticed by the happy cream-colored pony. Well, I'll talk to you later, new friends. She giggled and trotted past, heading back to the main campus. Psych, croaked Vinyl. Is there anything that Pony isn't involved in? Octavia said disbelievingly. Gasping in realization, the unicorn rounded on the cellist. What if he knows? Did he tell her to come see us? How does he know we live in this building? Um, Vinyl, perhaps we should take this to our room. Octavia knew she couldn't put off telling Vinyl about Psyche any longer. Guilt flooded her mind as she realized she probably should have told her a few days ago. They made haste into the building and up the stairs, welcoming the warmth inside. The cold was less noticeable when they had clothes on, but it was far from gone. Once inside their room, Octavia deliberately took her time taking off each boot, trying to stall the dreaded moment for just a bit longer. Vinyl pulled her beanie off, letting her hair resume its former shape. She slipped off the boots and approached her roommate slowly. In any other circumstances, she would move in for a kiss, but she was far too worried to be in the mood. Do you know something I don't? she asked quietly. Octavia cringed and looked at the ground. Oh, please don't get angry. The unicorn felt a stab of pain in her chest at the idea. She quickly moved closer and raised the cellist's chin so she looked her in the eyes. I'm not going to get angry. Just tell me what's up. "'cause I feel out of the loop here.' Taking a deep breath, Octavia took the plunge. Okay, this is just dumb. Like, obviously... What the hell is Vinyl gonna care if Psyche knows that the... This is dumb. This is dumb. 
Psyche is the current student counselor. When I went to see a professional, it turned out to be him. Jamming her eyes shut, she continued quickly. I told him everything. How the arguments were fake, how we became friends, how... How you make me feel. Everything. She didn't dare open her eyes to see Vinyl's reaction, for fear of seeing those garnet eyes laced with disappointment or rage or sadness. It would be too much. Vinyl, I'm so, so sorry. I... I was confused about so many things, and... The feeling of lips quickly pressing against hers indicated it was time to stop talking. It was a short peck, meant to silence and reassure simultaneously. Well, what did he say? The DJ asked softly. He gave me some advice. It gave me the courage to come back to you, and... Well, you know what happened. He didn't say, I knew it or anything? No, no, definitely not. He's completely professional. Vinyl sighed in relief. I'm glad to hear he's not as much of a douchebag as I thought he was. But I'm still kind of hurt that you didn't tell... What? Are you serious? Who gives a shit? She immediately found herself enjoying the extreme close-up she had been thinking about earlier in the day. It was impossible to not immediately accept the cellist's apology. You know what? I'll get over it. With the words out of the way, she moved in to return fire. This was something she hadn't considered during her reverie at the shop. She had thought of Octavia as a weakness, albeit one she couldn't do without, but a weakness nonetheless. That may have been true, but it wasn't the extent of Octavia's influence in her life. As she had just felt, her cellist gave her the strength to not let the little things affect her. She was her greatest strength as well. It didn't matter that Psyche knew, or that Bon Bon suspected, or that every pony would probably know soon enough. All that mattered was Octavia, breathing hard and blindly trying to pull Vinyl closer than was physically possible. At the end of the day, as long as she could come home to her cellist, nothing else mattered. Well, that was sweet. That was a sweet little... Uh, I don't really know the right word for that term, I guess, uh... But it was nice at the end. But like... <laughs> Come on! Who? <laughs> yeah, I told I told our psychology teacher that we're together. Oh my god! I can't believe you would tell me that. Really? Really. Okay. <clears throat> what are we at? 17 minutes. Alright, here's chapter 15. Octavia's first no-study-allowed week had passed far too quickly. The old adage, time flies when you're having fun, came to mind, and it certainly rang true in this instance. The last week had been the most fun she'd had in her entire life, and it was all because of Vinyl. They had just finished yet another experiment, and Vinyl was now on her computer tapping buttons with feverish speed. They didn't surprise her. The DJ always became rather inspired after kissing. For her part, Octavia still lay on their makeshift double bed, watching the glass of water on the table beside it quaver from the base. As earth-shaking as it was, she had actually grown to enjoy this particular type of music. Vinyl had been experimenting with many different kinds of classical instruments in addition to her usual array of synthetic sounds. Ever since that first song on that fateful day, the tracks had gotten better and better, to the extent that the unicorn couldn't wait for her next gig just so she could show them off. This is gonna change the world, Philly. Okay, something that bothers me, like I know... I know in the world of ponies, they use all these puns. But I wish they'd just say baby, because, like, Philly sounds weird. Vinyl had said a few days ago as one of her songs drew to a close. Just you watch. We're not just rewriting the rule book. We're burning it and snorting the ashes. As distasteful as that sounded, Octavia couldn't deny that their latest creations were nothing like the current trends of the musical world. She entertained secret fantasies of herself and Vinyl leading the euphonious revolution with their combined talent, though she wasn't quite sure how to go about such a thing. Besides, she didn't even have a degree yet. And that thought brought her back to the problem at hoof. Exams loomed in the distance, drawing closer with each day. Her no-study tactic was starting to make her nervous. Do you think Psyche will mind if I do just a little bit of studying? She said loudly over the music. The track cut off abruptly with a comical record scratch, and the eponymous perpetrator spun in her computer chair. 
Nah, uh don't even think about it. Vinyl tried to maintain a stern gaze, but the seat kept slowly rotating, making her look over the whole room before rounding on Octavia again. If he said no studying, then no studying. Don't make me lock your books up. But the exams are in one week, sulked the cellist, knowing she wouldn't be able to change her roommate's mind. You'd probably ace him even if you never went to a single lecture. I'm glad every pony is so confident in my abilities, but forgive me if I don't share in your certainty. Octavia rolled over and stuffed her face into a pillow with a huff. Unable to resist, the unicorn helped herself to an eyeful of classy gray backside. You're cute when you sulk. The treble clef marked mare curled up, unintentionally aiding the voyeuristic agenda of her DJ. I'm not sulking, said her muffled voice. Yeah, you are, and it's adorable. Octavia turned and launched the pillow at her roommate, falling short by a meter. I am not adorable. Giggling, Vinyl slid off her chair and walked over to the bed. Screwing up your nose like that isn't really helping your case, you know. Oh, you are impossible. She dropped off the side of the bed and marched straight up to her DJ, intending to give her a peace of mind. Okay, I've noticed. They, who, I can't remember the name of who wrote this at the moment, but they stopped using the DJ and the cellist, which is getting really old, but now they're using her DJ and her cellist because, like, they're in a relationship now. That's a nice little... Little touch. As usual, her treacherous body decided it would be much more entertaining if she threw her hooves around Vinyl's neck and gave her an angry kiss. When they broke apart, the unicorn was wearing a cocky grin, as if that was exactly the response she had expected. It infuriated Octavia to no end. Why is she so confident all of a sudden? During their first kiss, Vinyl had been just as hesitant as Octavia, perhaps even more so. But now, seeing the DJ swagger over for a bit of fun was quickly becoming an hourly occurrence. Not that Octavia really minded, it was comforting to know that at least one of them seemed to know what they were doing. Still, the sudden boost in confidence was notable enough to warrant investigation. Letting her glare drop into one of those fluttery eyelid looks that her roommate inexplicably seemed to like, Octavia carefully began to dig. You're certainly very amorous today. Any particular reason why? Philly, I'm always amorous when you're around. What's amorous mean? Uh, it's the feeling that makes you want to... get close to some pony. Ah, oh, final smile grew into a grin. Ah, oh, I get ya! Octavia cleared her throat so she wouldn't get distracted. Despite seeing them close up every day, those red eyes were still as hypnotizing as the first time. You just seem very, um, bold lately, even more than usual. Shrugging, the DJ brushed a strand of blue hair aside. What can I say? Getting to make out with a high-class pony like you does wonders for my self-esteem. It was becoming difficult to resist getting hypnotized, especially after such sweet words. Vinyl was quickly becoming quite adept at finding new ways to make her blush. That was one of the things Octavia loved about her. She always knew the perfect thing to say. That particular trait was one they did not share. She lamented. Every time she wanted to say something romantic or flirty, it always came out wrong or just made Vinyl call her cheesy. Regardless of how sincere she was, sometimes she couldn't help but envy her roommate's raw charisma, especially now that they were getting into the habit of spending entire days together. It wasn't that she didn't feel comfortable around Vinyl. Quite the opposite, really. She felt so comfortable that she wanted to say and try new things constantly, but she could never execute them without making a fool of herself. Oh, what I would give just to be able to tell you the things I want. As usual, her mind quickly moved onwards to avoid that particular path. It was too early, and it didn't make sense, and they were too young, she affirmed herself, piling as many excuses as possible on top of the topic in question so as to hide it from her mind's eye. Vinyl... She said, mind racing to find something to say. Have... have you ever been in a relationship before? Her heart skipped a beat. Uh, is that the right word for what we have? The DJ looked surprised. Yeah, I guess it is. We didn't really ask each other out, did we? It just sort of happened. The refined mare closed her eyes. N no, I suppose we didn't. Well then, 
Vinyl took a step back and straightened up. What? See, so, you know, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Will you be my Philly friend? Ugh. Octavia's heart immediately began to beat faster. Even though they had been together for a little while now, it was oddly exhilarating to see Vinyl be so serious about making it official. She felt a light, fluttery feeling behind her chest. Suddenly, the phrase butterflies in her stomach made a lot of sense. The unicorn coughed. Uh, Octavia? Uh, yes, yes, sorry, yes. She dove forward to engulf her Philly friend. Oh my god, if they're going to keep using that word. <laughs> in a hug. Sorry again, I got lost in my thoughts. Letting out a relieved sigh, Vinyl held a hoof to her own chest as if in pain. Don't do that to me, Philly. She laughed hoarsely. It's cruel. Oh, sorry, Octavia emphasized each apology with a peck on the other mare's alabaster neck. Sorry, sorry, sorry. A soft, high-pitched noise slipped out of Vinyl's mouth. The cellist froze immediately, lips still pressed against skin. Several things became apparent. Vinyl was panting. Though she was trying to hide it by breathing through her nose, she was also warm. Very warm. The kind of temperature that ponies only reached in certain situations. Her heart was beating even quicker than Octavia's. She could feel her roommate's pulse under her lips. Octavia, Vinyl whispered shakily, you really shouldn't kiss there. The cellist slowly moved her head back so she could see Vinyl's face. Those red eyes avoided her, looking somewhat pained. Guilt flooded Octavia's mind, and she took another step backwards, feeling a little undeserving to be so close. Do... do you want to talk about it? she asked. Talking was good. She always solved her problems with talking. I don't know. Do you want to talk about it? Vinyl finally met her eyes, if only for a second. I don't know either. They stood and silenced each wondering what the other was thinking instead of mulling the issue over. Eventually, after telepathy proved impossible, Octavia decided to try and give them both an escape route. It was the least she could do after creating the situation. We could always talk about it later, she offered. As she had hoped, Vinyl leapt at the thought. Yeah, I mean, we're not going anywhere. And exams are coming up. I've got a lot of music to work on. I should really start preparing our cheat sheets. The internet isn't going to surf itself. My cello needs cleaning, parties to go, jaws to drop, so we can definitely talk about it later. Indeed. After another moment of staring, they broke into laughter, dispelling any awkwardness that had accumulated. Wow, we're awful at this stuff. I know, Octavia replied from amidst giggles. Maybe we've been cooped up in here too long. Want to go out somewhere? The cellist nodded. Absolutely. Some fresh air will do us good. To the tavern, declared the DJ, rearing in the air dramatically before charging out the door. Oh, dear. Octavia eyed the blue liquid in the small glass before her. It pulsed softly with magical energy and illuminated some scratches on the hard, dark wood of the bar. Under the light lighting... The most well-maintained building on campus showed its age. It was only early afternoon, so they were almost alone in the tavern. Vinyl was gritting and nodding her head, waiting for the Philly friend... I swear. Waiting for her Philly friend to drink. The cellist nudged the glass away with one hoof, watching the substance swirl around unnaturally. I told you, I'm still underage. Unfazed, the DJ pushed it closer again. And I told you, it's non-alcoholic. It's a magical cocktail. It's probably worse than alcohol. And yet totally legal as long as you're over 16. Cool, huh? I figured you might need something to take the edge off of all that studying you're not doing. Octavia slumped on her stool. Oh, Celestia, don't remind me. I'm going to go insane if I keep thinking about that. Yep. So, go on, just take a sip. Vinyl, I don't want to drink anything like this, all right? Can't we have fun without it? Finally giving up, the DJ left the glass alone and tossed her Philly friend a smirk. I thought we were going to talk about that later. 
I didn't mean that, the Grey Mare insisted, though she knew Vinyl wouldn't believe her. Course you didn't. Sorry, I shouldn't keep trying to make you drink stuff. It's pretty much the only thing I did with my friends in high school, so I guess I just keep defaulting to it whenever we get bored. I mean, a bunch of other things come to mind, but uh, I'm just going to shut up now. Octavia decided to let that one pass, simply because she had also found her mind coming back to that one particular topic. It was frustrating. The harder she tried to avoid thinking about it, the more it invaded her mind. With a sigh of her own, she decided to confront the issue. Or at least, set up a future confrontation that was a little bit more specific than later. Vinyl, I think we really should talk about it. The white mare waved a hoof dismissively. We will. Later. No, we need to choose an actual time and day. Otherwise, we'll be saying later forever. I don't know about that. I think if you kiss your friend on the neck a couple more times, she'll probably... Probably get... Uh, Vinyl opened her mouth to make another excuse, but all that came out was an exhausted groan. Yeah, yeah, you're right. When should we do it? I mean... <clears throat> talk. When should we talk? Octavia bit her lip as she thought. Maybe... Wednesday? That way we have a few more days before it, and if it goes badly, then we have an additional few days to get ourselves together for the exams. Hey, come on, Vinyl whispered comfortingly, shifting her stool closer so she could put a hoof around her cellist neck. It won't go badly, no matter what. I'll, I'll stick with you, or something like that. I'm not as good at this as you are, just trust me, nothing's gonna go badly. Vinyl felt like kicking herself. This was one of those times where words meant everything. Yet she could never get them to come out right. Her roommate always said sweet little things that rolled off the tongue and made her feel warm inside. But the DJ just couldn't think of anything to say back to them. How could anything she might think of possibly compare to those treasured remarks? And that wasn't even including all the body language tricks she seemed to know. Vinyl could barely stop her jaw from dropping every time Octavia winked or posed in a seemingly innocuous manner and then acted oblivious to the tantalizing nature of her actions. Sometimes, late at night, when Octavia was asleep, Vinyl would remember it all and feel more than a little unworthy. That refined gray mare was clearly working through an intricate game of courtship or something, and Vinyl had no idea how to play. Are there dating classes for high society ponies? Would they let me join one? Not a chance, he concluded. A little bit annoyed at the imaginary snobs and their imaginary classes, she'd show them. She would learn to be a great Philly friend without their help. Screw them. Thank you, Octavia replied, smiling as she planted a kiss on the unicorn's cheek. You're probably right. It'll all be okay. Maybe more than fine if you catch my drift, said Vinyl instinctually. Once again, Hoof met face with a resounding smack. Look, just hit me next time I do that. Why? You're doing a fine job of it yourself? The sun slowly dimmed, unnoticed for a time by the two ponies at the bar. The only drinks they ordered were two glasses of water between, which a little cup of blue liquid remained untouched. Though the bartender knew they weren't going to be big customers today, he didn't have the heart to tell them to buy something or get out. Besides, that kind of behavior was for the late night crowd, not two mares relaxing on a Saturday evening. So they remained undisturbed by staff and owner alike. Only when the bell above the doors began to ring every few minutes did they realize that time had once again passed them by. The sun was low in the sky, and students and staff were finishing up with the day's work. When they found themselves squeezed between two burly physical education students at the bar, it was unanimously agreed the time had come to vacate the premises. After all, the only reason most bar crowds were tolerable at all was because every pony was drunk off their flank. Throwing two sober mares into the mix was just asking for trouble. The couple pushed through the door and out into the oddly clear-skied weather. The temperature was still miserable, but they were just grateful to see the sun again. However, it only took a few moments for the novelty of Celestia's charge being visible to wear off and be replaced by an intense longing for their new warm clothes, all of which were still back in the apartment. But before they could even take three steps down the path leading home, they were halted by the sight of an incoming psychology tutor. Vinyl prayed that he would somehow not see them and continue past, though she knew it was a futile hope. Oh, hello, you two! Lovely evening, isn't it? The stallion said cheerfully. 
All right, just get it out of your system now and leave me in peace, came the DJ's harsh reply, cutting off Octavia's significantly friendlier one. Sykes' smile didn't falter, but he did raise an eyebrow. Get what out of my system? Tell me how you knew it all along and all that. Knew what all along? That, uh, that, uh... The unicorn was quickly becoming confused, and she cast a look at Octavia, who merely smiled and shrugged. Wow, this has been a great chat, but I'm gonna have to leave you two mortal enemies to yourselves. There's a mug full of alcohol of some kind that has my name on it. Psyche trotted merrily between them, pausing only to whisper in Vinyl's ear. If you ever need to talk about how much you hate Octavia, my office is in the big building next to the maintenance sheds. With that, he practically skipped into the tavern. The cellist couldn't resist nudging her shell-shocked roommate. See, I told you he's not that bad. All right, now, <clears throat> here's, here's, here's what I have to say about that. Who, who gets in the moment, who makes their partner clearly aroused and then just, uh, yeah, we should, we should do this later. I mean, okay, now I understand, you know, sometimes it's probably not the best, you know, or the right time to have sex. I get that. But... Why would you... Come on. Let's set up a date and time to talk about what happened. Really now? Really? That's not... It's about the... It's about the feeling, bro. You know? It's about the... It's about what's inside your soul, man. You don't set up times to talk about that kind of stuff. You just do it. You go home. You go home. You kiss her on the neck. She's like, shit, I want to fuck. And you're like... Oh, well, this happened before, and last time I got embarrassed. Well, I guess I should stop being a freaking coward and fuck you already. I mean, you guys are treating each other like you're married, you know, going, sitting at the bar with your hands all over each other and doing all these public displays of affection. Why don't you just have sex? Anyway, that's it for these chapters. If you want to support me on Patreon, the link's in below. It's that's down there on Discord. Join the Discord if you want to hear live readings of my readings every time they happen. There's a lot of people in here. There's a community we got going on. Starting to starting to build up. Starting to be a lot of people getting in here. So come on down to Discord. Come on down to Patreon. Give me your money. All right. See you next time.